Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and I am back with the second video of the video series on Fiber to Fabric Class 6 Science. I am Roshni from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can learn anything, anytime, from anywhere absolutely for free at learnohub.com. So children, in the previous video we learned about fibers natural and synthetic fibers and in this video our agenda is to learn in more detail about cotton and also about the different steps which are involved in converting a fiber to a fabric for example we will talk about spinning weaving knitting and so on so are we all excited to learn more about it let's get started Now we will talk in detail about a natural fiber, a plant fiber that is cotton. So when we talk about cotton, it is a very common name in our household because we wear a lot of clothes made up of cotton, we use bed sheets, we use curtains made up of cotton. So it is a fabric which is obtained from a plant fiber. So the fiber that is cotton fiber is obtained from the cotton plant. So when you look at the cotton plant, this is how they look and here you can see some uh, snow like balls which are nothing but the fruits of this cotton plant. So you can see here, these are the fruits of the cotton plant. So they, are, they resemble uh, snow, like very light and like white, made completely white in appearance. So these cotton balls which are, they are all approximately the size of a lemon and these fruits of cotton plant actually give us the cotton fibers. So cotton plants are grown in fields. So if you look at a cotton field, this is how it looks like. So when they have actually produced fruits, so it, it, it actually the field looks like as if it is covered with snow because everywhere you have those cotton balls. So as you can see here. now. Normally, the ideal climate for cotton plants to grow is warm climate. So they need warm climate that is comparatively higher temperature. At, but at the same time, when you talk about the soil, they need black soil. Black soil is the type of soil where cotton plants grow well. So basically, these are the requirements for growing cotton plants. Now, when you look at the cotton balls, if you look at each cotton ball, they, they, they appear like they do not have a fixed shape. They are like, you know, uh, white colored thing, the fiber like thing. And inside this, they have the seeds. The seeds are like black in color. So the black seeds are present within the cotton balls. So when the cotton balls become mature, they burst out and the seeds covered with cotton fibers are seen. So how do they look like? So let us have a look. So we will actually see that how we exactly we extract cotton fibers from these cotton fruits. So we will see that in a little while. So before that, since we are talking so much about cotton, let's see where do we use cotton. So it is used in a lot of places like uh, in the pillows, in mattresses, in the weeks of candles and diyas. So have you ever seen, uh, I mean, I'm sure you'd have lit a diya or a candle during Diwali or uh, during uh, while you do puja. So there you would have seen this wick which you place inside dipped in oil because of which it actually burns. So that wick is made up of cotton. Cotton fabrics, obviously they are used for making dresses, bed sheets, carpets, curtains, etc. So a lot of stuff, stuff are made up from cotton fabric. So now let us try to look at the process of how cotton fibers give cotton fabric. So cotton fibers, as I said, they are obtained from these fruits of the cotton plant. So first we will see how do we get fibers from these fruits. Then we will see how those fibers are gradually assembled together to get a fabric like this. So we will look at the entire process from this stage to this stage. 
So the steps which are involved during these entire processes are ginning, spinning, weaving, knitting. So these are some of the processes which are involved within this uh, big process of getting cotton fabric from cotton fiber. So let us start with ginning. So it is a process in which fibers are separated from seeds. Now as I said that the fruits of the cotton plant, so they are nothing but the cotton bowls. So the cotton bowls contain the seeds inside. This is how the seeds look like. So they contain the seeds as as well as they contain the cotton fibers now it is our job to separate the two because let's say this is the cotton ball so when the cotton ball becomes mature it burst when it burst from inside we get the seeds as well as the uh, fibers now we do not need the seeds we only need the cotton fibers so first of all we need to separate the fibers from the seeds so that's the first step and this process is called ginning now how do we do this now in the uh, ancient days it was done manually like people used to actually hand pick the seeds and separate them from the fibers but that was a tedious process it was uh, time consuming so that is why later some machines were uh, formed and these machines helped us to do the process of gaining little fast and also with good efficiency now in these machines what happens is you just put all the seed cotton that means the cotton cotton fibers along with the seeds so it, the entire thing is put into this now this keeps spinning and then what happens what the seeds get collected here so here you get the seeds and whatever comes out from this place so that is the fiber fiber without seed because the seeds have got collected here so all the seeds will get collected here and the remaining thing that is the cotton will come here and what what comes here now when it moves when it rotates in this spinner all the waste materials other than the seeds and the fibers all waste materials get collected in this trash bin so this is the very basic structure of a cotton gin so this is how it works so and this is how we can very easily separate the fibers from the seeds without any manual effort. Now the modern machines look somewhat like this as you can see here. So this is how the cotton fibers come out of them. So they are like uh, quite clean, no seeds, no dirt and dust. So that's how very neatly they come out of these machines. Now just have a look at it. Just now I was telling about the appearance of the cotton fibers. They resemble snow. So if you look at it from far, you would actually feel like snow. So you see, it's, it's like they do not have any specific shape. It's like uh, uh, the snowy appearance. So see, from these huge machines, so much of cotton fibers are like produced. And then these cotton fibers will later be assembled in such a way that they will form different cotton fabrics which will be used for making a dress or making a curtain, making a mattress, making a carpet and so many other stuff. So that, that's what we will now see that now once we have these cotton fibers, I mean how do we arrange these? So the next step that comes is spinning. So it is a process of making yarn from fibers. So what is yarn? So you see fibers are like this. They do not have a specific shape. It, it's like uh, uh, you know kind of hollow at the same time no specific shape and it is not arranged in a proper way so when we say yarn what is yarn yarn is nothing but uh, you would have uh, seen the kind of uh, thread like structures which are like rolled over a particular thing so rolled in a, in an organized way so that they do not get tangled for example have you ever seen the need uh, the needle and the thread so the threads are like rolled in a specific pattern so that it, it does, doesn't get tangled similarly when you look at the wool yarns so there also this is how the wool yarn looks like so the woolen fibers are like uh, uh, organized in a specific pattern and that's how it is rolled and kept so it helps the wool to be utilized later in a nice way so it prevents them from getting entangled now how do we get a yarn like this from a fiber like this which is so disorganized so the basic thing that we do during spinning is we stretch the fiber and at the same time we twist them also so this is like when you stretch the fiber you get a long thread like structure and at the same time you keep rotating it 
So, you know, it, it, it's kind of getting twisted and getting stretched. Both are happening at the same time. And this is how you get a thread like structure. Whether you talk about the cotton threads, you talk about the wool, you talk about the silk threads. So, everywhere you have a thread like structure. So, this is how the thread like structure is formed. And then with these thread like structures, you will uh, later get the fabric. Now, the question is, how do we do this? This doesn't seem to be simple. Like you have so much of uh, uh, fiber and how do we just manually stretch and twist these fibers to form such yarns? That, that sounds really insane and that sounds really impossible. Well, it is not impossible, but yes, to make this tedious task simple, we make use of machines. But in the machines also the basic fact that the basic thing that needs to be done is they need to be stretched plus twisted. So stretching and twisting needs to happen at the same time and that is how we spin the fibers. Now some of the devices which are commonly used for spinning are charkha. So charkha is a very popular device and uh, which was uh, very popular, which was made popular by Mahatma Gandhi during independence. So when he was uh, he was ahead with the independence revolution in our country, he encouraged people to wear clothes. Uh, which are like made in India. So he encouraged people to wear clothes of uh, hand spun yarn. So how did he spun the yarn? I mean, how did he make use of the fibers to make clothes? So he made use of this machine, which is like a spinning wheel. So you see a big wheel and the wheel keeps like spinning. So here the fiber is arranged in such a way that the fiber gets straight, stretched and at the same time as the wheel moves so it also gets twisted so the twisting and stretching happens because of this device and that's how you see you he is holding something in his hand and whatever thread is coming out of it that is getting rolled on on this so that's how you make the yarn so basically you started with something like the cotton fibers which i showed you in one of the previous slides i mean it's like the the snow like appearance so there you didn't have any thread or anything but now because of this charkha you are able to get a thread and then you are rolling the thread on something which is which gives rise to the formation of yarn so this charkha appeared in china in the 11th century but later with uh, like more technological advancements it was replaced with the hand spinning spindle now this charkha is like quite huge and it is not portable so i mean it, it's not very easy to carry it from one place to another so that those were some of the uh, disadvantages of charkha so later it was replaced with something called takli so this takli is nothing but uh, it is like a spindle so you see it looks so handy you can just hold it in your hand and you can just do the spinning yourself so it is a, a small spindle which is used for spinning short fibers like cotton. Now it cannot be used for long fibers but for short fibers especially cotton. In fact uh, the charkha was also used chiefly for cotton. So that means this takli could be a good replacement for the charkha because of its convenience. So another important thing is this spindle, uh, this uh, takli, it spins very fast. It spins so fast that, you know, it does your job very quickly. So what do we want to do? You see here, so this is how the uh, cotton fibers are. Right? Not organized, not in the form of threads. Now, when you stretch them and you put it in the spindle, so as the spindle rotates like this, and it rotates very fast. Now, as it rotates, what happens? This thread-like structures, they kind of get rolled over it. And that's how you get it in the form of yarn. So, that's how the yarn formation is taking place. So, it is very, very efficient in spinning short fibers like cotton. So, it has more advantages than uh, the charkha. For example, it is handy, it is very fast, efficient, inexpensive and because of so many advantages, it, it kind of took over the charkha. So, these are some of the ways by which cotton spinning is done. So, the first step was gaining where the seeds are removed from the fibers. The second step where the fibers are stretched to form thread like structures and that's how they were uh, the yarn formation takes place. Now, once you have the yarn, then it becomes easier to kind of, you know, uh, assemble the threads to form a fabric. So now comes the third step that is weaving. Now in weaving what we do is we arrange two yarns together to make a fabric something of this sort. So here you see you can see one red yarn. So this is one type of thread 
and the vertical ones are the other type of threads. So it is like two types of threads, they are like crossed over one another. So you see how you have crossed them with each other and that's how you make a fabric. So when you are able to do this completely, what you get is a fabric. So let us have a look at it. So this is how a fabric looks like. So here we need, now for weaving to happen, you need two distinct sets of yarns. So that is very important. You need two distinct sets. With one yarn, you cannot do it. So what? where are those two distinct sets used? So one is the longitudinal ones, as you can see here. So these threads, these are the... Uh, the, sorry, these are the lateral ones, that is the horizontal ones, and these are the longitudinal ones. So the lateral threads, so these are the lateral thread. So the lateral thread is termed as weft. And the longitudinal thread is termed as warp. So warp and weft. So what happens is you basically have one set of threads which are placed say horizontally and then you have another set of thread which is like woven through these horizontally placed strands and that's how you get a structure like this. So here you see one is like horizontal strands and then through those horizontal strands you have the vertical strands going through them and that's how you get a woven structure like this and this is this process is called weaving. So basically two distinct sets of yarn they are interlaced to form a fabric or a cloth. Now, how do we do this weaving? Because again, this doesn't seem to be simple that, you know, it cannot be very easily done with hands and we also need perfection. So again, here we make uses of certain devices. The most common device that is used for weaving is called loom. So what happens in this device? So this device holds the warp, warp that is the longitudinal threads or the vertical threads. So that is the vertical threads will be like placed in this device like this. And then the horizontal threads would be woven through them. So the horizontal threads will go through them like this. So like, you know, they're going up and down, up and down. So let's say, let's say the horizontal thread will go like this, up, again, down, up, again, down, up, again, down. And that's how you kind of weave the two threads with each other. Now again, this loom can be hand operated or it can be power operated. So let us look at this example. So here you can see a lady is uh, weaving. So how is she weaving? So looking at this, you can see the, the, the vertical strands are see kind of placed here. So they are here and what she is doing is she is just weaving the or she is just placing the uh, horizontal strand. So the wrap is already there. So she is weaving the weft through the wrap and that is how she would get the fabric. Now there are certain power operated loom and in power operated looms you really do not need to do anything manually. So here what happens is uh, machines are kind of well oiled, cleaned and well maintained and through the machines you just give the input and the machine will kind of do the entire process of weaving and it will just give out give you the output which is the fabric and because of this difference like in power operated so one is power operated looms and the other one is the hand operated loom so the hand operated loom is also called hand loom so this is again a very common term you would have seen a lot of shops which say haryana hand loom punjab hand loom and so on so hand loom is basically the hand operated looms they are hand looms now in hand looms, uh, it needs more effort from the person. So the person who is involved in uh, weaving using the hand loom, they, a lot of strength is needed to do the weaving job. And that is why mostly men are uh, employed in hand looms. Whereas in power looms, since everything happens using machines, so not a lot of strength is needed. So a lot of girls and even young women are also employed in power operated looms. So this is how we actually weave. Okay, so now we have reached the third step. So we started with the cotton plant. So from the cotton plant, we take the cotton fruits. From the cotton fruits, we receive, we remove the seeds and we get the cotton fiber. That cotton fiber is then stretched and twisted to make the yarns. Now once, once we have the yarns, so the yarn, two sets of yarns are taken and then they are woven either using machines or hand. And once you weave them, all that you get is a cotton fabric. So basically, this is 
pretty much about how we get cotton fabric from the cotton fiber. So knitting is basically another alternative process to weaving by which we can arrange the yarn to form a fabric. Like in case of weaving, what we did, we took two sets of yarns and arranged themselves interlaced with each other and we form a fabric that's what we did in weaving now in knitting what we will do instead of taking two sets of yarn we will take a single set of yarn so using a single set of yarn we will arrange it in such a way that it will form a fabric the best example that you can think of is knitting sweaters and it is something very common which is done by females in fact uh, you can check out at your house uh, your mom or granny would know how to knit a sweater. So what they do, they take this yarn of wool and then with the help of these uh, sticks, they, you know, kind of uh, knit them together. So they just have one set of wool and with that they knit the entire sweater. So, so using one set of yarn also, you can create the entire fabric. So this is knitting. Now there are various types of knitted fa fabric. Now it is not only the sweaters which are knitted. For example, you think of the woolen caps, obviously woolen clothes and there also you have a lot of designs. So all the knitted sweaters do not look similar. They also have so many patterns or designs on them. So you can knit them accordingly to get different designs. You can also have a lace knitting. So these kind of table clothes you would have seen, I'm pretty sure. So this is like lace knitting. You might have uh, the socks, now just look at your socks, not only the woolen socks, the normal socks also, just try to pull a thread from it and what happens as you pull the thread, the thread keeps coming out of it, but that's how it happens. Why does it happen? Because it contains only one type of thread. So you, as you keep pulling the thread, all the thread which forms that entire socks, they are all like kind of interconnected. So you start pulling it, the entire thing comes out. So these are another examples where the it is and which is an example of knitted fabric. You also have um, knitted dress. So the entire dress is uh, formed by knitting. Not the dress. I would say the dress has been stitched, but the entire fabric of the dress has been knitted. So. Many a times people get confused between uh, woven, woven fabric and knitted fabric. They feel that both of them are same. Now knitting and weaving, both of them are same in one context that in both the cases they help the yarn to get converted into a fabric. But in case of knitting we make use of single set of yarn. In case of weaving we make use of two distinct sets of yarn. And how can you, uh, by looking at the fabric, how do you know whether it is a knitted fabric or a woven fabric. So let us have a look at that. So we will have a comparison between knitted versus woven fabric. So when we talk about uh, knitted fabric obviously one type of thread is used and here two types of threads are used. So just look at this picture. So here you have one thread which is like horizontal. So these are one type of threads. The other threads that is vertical they are the other types of threads. So in woven you have two types of threads. But in case of knitted you just have one type of thread and you know this itself gets like interlaced with itself and that's how you get a knitted fabric. So when you look at a knitted fabric it is more stretchy. So the stretchable clothes are made up of knitting. So why they are stretchable because you see there are a lot of open spaces in between and these open spaces allows the stretchability whereas the woven fabric they are comparatively non-stretchy. So when you look at the woven fabric, you would actually see the threads, the two types of threads are running perpendicular to each other. But when you look at a knitted fabric, you see that it is all one continuous piece of thread. So one piece of thread which is running continuously and the loops, the interlocking loops, they allow for the natural stretchiness. Knitted fabric is thicker and heavier whereas the woven fabric is thinner and lighter. That is another difference. So knitted fabric is interlooped because here you just have one thread. So it is like loop formation within itself. Whereas uh, woven fabric is interlaced. So two different uh, threads are like interlaced with each other. So some examples of knitted fabrics are t-shirts, sweaters, whereas woven fabric would be denim, chiffon, satin. These are all examples of woven fabric. So just have a look at a satin cloth or a denim cloth. You will actually see that it is not stretchy. You can stretch, you can't stretch it. But when you look at a sweater or a sweatshirt or a t-shirt, 
I hope you found this video useful. If you have a feedback to share, please do share that in the comment section. Do share the video with your friends if you liked the video. And I will meet you all very soon with a new video, with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.